The beautiful site you can see behind my shoulder is part of the exposition of the Estonian Open Air Museum, which is the biggest museum of vernacular architecture in Estonia. The museum was founded in 1957 already, and it extends on 80 hectares, so quite a big territory. We have 11 farmyards here, which have arranged in four different villages. Now we stand um, in the village green uh, from the zone of the islands. It's a very simple house without a chimney, with low log walls and a high straw thatched or reed covered roof. And this house type is really unique, which can be found only in Estonia and in the northern part of Latvia, which was also once settled by Finno Ugric people. The zone of the islands of the museum contains another pearl besides the oldest environment. It's the farm from the Muhu Island. And as on the whole, uh, the Estonian farmyards are quite modest without decorations. So on that particular island, we can find exceptional means of decorating the farmhouses. Here we have the painted doors, for example, and inside there are painted chests, which is not very typical to the folk art of Estonia in general. And Muhu is an exception in many other ways too. The women of Muhu have loved very wild colors in their carpets and blankets and in their folk costumes. And the men of Muhu have been very good builders. They, have, uh, uh, they were very famous, and if you look at those houses, they look like toy, toy buildings, or they are so neatly built. So there's the saying that Muhu people were keen on patterns, and that's what you can see here in this farm too. So this is the heart of the building. The room, which is very important, as it has so many functions. First, it serves as a kitchen, because what we see here is a big barn oven. This is the place which heats the house. And bread is also baked here in the same oven. This is a very long, warm wall. It gives heat uh, to the kiln room we are standing and also to the bedrooms that are built to the other side of it. The room is polyfunctional, as I said. It also served as a place for drying grain, which was done here on top of the poles. And what you can see over there, it's the freshing floor where the grain was freshed in, uh, in autumn. But it was also a, a place to keep farm vehicles. And here we can see the dining table of, um, of the Estonians who lived in the farm. And what can we can see on the table is the ordinary menu of a farmer. It is the potatoes and fish. The salted fish was the ordinary food for an Estonian peasant until, let's say, the end of the 19th century, when some modern cooking entered the farm and farmhouses as well. But potatoes and salted fish, that's very Estonian until nowadays. On an Estonian farm, everything was produced on the spot. And that meant that the women had to be skilled in handicrafts, but the men had to prepare all the wooden vessels, for example, that were used on a farm. Here we can see a carpenter's bench. The farmer used to make uh, all the buckets, all the, the vessels to keep milk, to keep uh, flour or barley. Everything was done on the spot. And that's why in this farm, even the window has been made a little bit bigger to have more light in the room so that it would be more convenient for the farmer to work here. But the same room 
It so it was a, a workroom, but at the same time, it also served as a bedroom, as you can see different kind of beds here too. And as I told you, the families in on the islands were quite big, so there are some other additional bedrooms here too, which also shows the wild colors of Muhu. <laughs> the farmyard. Opposite the, the living house, opposite the chamber windows, there always stand the storehouses. Because when you think about the house which has no chimney, everything is rather smoky in there and smells of smoke. So all the necessary food supplies, all the supplies of textiles were kept away. So there could be separate buildings like this one for foodstuffs and uh, uh, grain supplies. But there could also be a separate one that was meant for keeping the textiles. So all the supplies, all the real treasure of the farm was kept in the storages and you could, could keep your eye on them all the time. In the end of the 19th century, the farmyard was already divided so that the chambers and the storages stood on the cleaner part of the yard. But on the other side, there were the buildings that were connected with the dirtier chores. This is the summer kitchen where cooking was done in summer, but it was also a place where laundry was done, the beer was brewed, and uh, cooking not only for the family, but the animals as well. Over there we can see the cattle shed, which are different rooms for pigs, sheep and cows. And on the dirtier part of the yard, there also were the gates of the fre threshing floor which was also connected with the dirtier tasks on the farm. Chambers were added to the Estonian farmyards, to the farmhouses, only in the 18th century. But as you can see, by the late 19th century, they had become quite neat and cosy places to live in. And at that time, they also had some modern pieces of furniture, like this chest of drawers, and nice needlework and handicraft entered the farmhouses from the German handicraft magazines. And as this room served as a place to live, for the whole family and there were a lot of children always too so it was quite natural that the, the children stayed uh, with their parents who were working at the same time and that's why we have some nice toys here in this room like this lovely horse a small chair and a kind of toy that was perhaps made by the children themselves so that they would stay by their parents and learn the skills for their future life. First of all, the chamber was a working room for the women and it was um, very important for them to start from late autumn and the handicraft they made here, everything, their work lasted until early spring. First of all, this is the spinning wheel. Unfortunately, I cannot do the task. Uh, that's why we have the handicraft demonstrations in the museum. But in the 19th century, the room was filled with whirring noise of the, of the spinning wheel when mothers used to work here. And it was quite often that the children stayed with them. And in Estonia, there has been the tradition that mothers taught their children to read while doing the spinning in winter time. 
So when the peasant women were ready with spinning, the weaving looms were brought to this chamber and it really took long days and months to weave all the textiles they needed on the farm. It started with the linen textiles, all the sheets and towels and bed covers and and the canvas for the shirts and then it was the uh, woolen fabric that was woven here. So the ladies on the farm were engaged with weaving until early spring. So this is the central and most important room in an Estonian farmhouse with a big oven in one end of the house, a smoke room which fills with smoke when the oven is heated and one might ask what is so special about it but the uniqueness of this room and of the whole Estonian farm building is that in the same room which is first of all a living room it combines with the functions of a barn and it's so in this way it's connected with our daily black bread in Estonia, uh, rye doesn't ripen in the fields in autumn, so the sheaves of grain had to be brought to the farmhouse and dried here. And the Estonians did not build a separate house for a barn. They put the same function of the barn, they combined it with their living room. And that's what you can see here. In autumn, the grain dried on top of the crossbars but it doesn't it didn't interrupt the daily life you could sit here under the smoke even and do whatever you needed in the house the museum is quite popular we have big events here which are very meaningful for all Estonians like Christmas and St. John's Eve for example we have big handicraft fairs here and in the future we hope that the museum is going to continue building uh, we have farms from the 20th century but we still want to show also the uh, the recent past we want to continue with showing the collective farm life and perhaps reach the present day in the in the future The chapel of Sutlepa is surely the most honorable exhibit building we have in the museum. Uh, this is a very simple wooden chapel that reminds of the farm buildings we have in the villages. And it was built in 1699, so it's more than 300 years old by now. And it's the second oldest wooden church that has preserved in Estonia. And in a way, the same chapel also serves as a monument to one of the minorities of Estonia who have lived here. It is the Swedes who have lived on the northwestern coast and smaller islands. So this chapel comes from the area they used to live and uh, the sermons were held here in Estonian and in Swedish as well. We are very proud of the chapel because um, uh, it is a working church. It was uh, reconsecrated in uh, 1989 and um, we have uh, sermons here on bigger church holidays and the atmosphere is really very special with all the candlelight and the, the harmonium and the feeling you get here is very special. It has become very popular by people. Who, we have had a lot of wedding sermons here and christenings and all these kind of things. of the museum is uh, symbolic in a way. You can see that the chapel opposes the big old trees. In uh, ancient times Estonians were pagans like many nations have been, most of us. Uh, and the first traces of Christianity reached here 
in the 11th century, but it was the 12th century when the Crusaders came and brought Catholic faith to Estonia. Starting from the Reformation, the country has turned Lutheran, so most of the Estonians are Lutherans by now, and uh, the church uh, represents also a Lutheran chapel. So when we enter, we can see that it is very simple, with almost no decorations, so there's only the pulpit and the altar rail, the works of a local carpenter that tries to, to copy in a way the, the Baroque masters, but it is very simple and, and still very nice.